Okay, so I think we'll um, we'll get started um, this afternoon. And um, thanks very much for everyone who's um, who's joined us, and for anyone who's uh, watching this. We are recording it, so um, if you want to watch it back later on, or if you didn't make it, um, it's no problem. We'll make it available. Um, okay, so I'll just uh, get started here. So uh, just to introduce uh, myself, it's Gary Cullen. I'm the Sales Marketing Director and CRO at Providence CRM. And uh, I'm joined today by my colleague at Sugar CRM, Erin O'Brien, who's a senior account executive for the UK and Ireland. And hopefully she can uh, she'll be able to say hello herself. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Gary. Um, thanks for the introduction. And yeah, thank you to everyone who has joined this afternoon and those who, um, as Gary mentioned, are maybe listening to the recording. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Gary, I can talk through the agenda. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so today's agenda, we do have um, some people joining who are existing customers of Sugar and Provident, and then those who um, might be interested in CRM and um, to purchase Sugar. So we're going to go through some subjects that are important for current users and those obviously interested in, in CRM um, for their businesses. So we're going to run through a little bit about who Provident CRM is, who Sugar CRM is, um, boosting productivity, um, promoting best practices, um, using sugar anytime, anywhere, and better leveraging your data within um, the CRM. And then we'll also save some time at the end for uh, some Q&A. So we do have, I think, an hour booked in, but we're going to make it short and sweet and maybe stick to about 25, 30 minutes of content and leave some time for the end um, at the end for some questions. Hope that works for everyone. And if you have questions along the way, please do um, enter them into the chat and we'll address those then at the end. Great, next slide, please. Great, okay. So um, just to give you an idea of, of who we are, um, we're obviously Providence CRM. Um, we've been in business for a pretty uh, a good amount of time. We were originally established in 2008 and we specialized in CRM around 2008. So um, we've been using a CRM internally ourselves, a very early version of Sugar from 2004, and then we formally became a partner um, in 2008, and from there we went forward. Um, we have about 42 people um, within the organization spread across varying different skill sets from consultants through to developers, business analysts, project managers, so we have a wide array of of disciplines within the organization. And um, we are solely targeted at CRM strategy. In this case, we'll be discussing um, optimizing sales process, which is one of the, the three core tenets of, of the CRM. Um, and obviously then any other business applications or business processes that need to be adopted into the, the application. Um, we have a core focus, as I mentioned, on, on CRM and team management. We are based uh, predominantly in the Dublin office in Ireland, we, we've got a, a core team that are, are based here, but we do have um, offices across the UK, in Spain and in Portugal, where we have team members who are based there to deliver um, either locally or to um, to projects that might be running. And um, we actually, interestingly enough, when COVID came along, we already had all the tools in place um, to allow the teams to work remotely. So um, luckily enough for ourselves, um, it wasn't as, as big a a turmoil as it could have been or has been for other organizations um, and just from our perspective working with sugar and um, we are a sugar elite partner and um, we've been the emea partner of the year in 2017 18 and 19 and um, which are which which is just an award that we're extremely proud of and um, we work with a vast array of organizations from both the public sector and the private sector um, everything from traditional CRM implementations where we're doing sales process automation and um, service desk or customer support and um, all the way through to unique business processes that need to be mapped out and um, we provide the assistance to get the processes mapped and we look at different methodologies and, and we find what best suits the organization and then we help implement those in the tools that have been adopted. So just a brief intro to us and I'll hand over to Oh, sorry. Um, just to touch on the services that we offer, obviously, as a, a value-added reseller of, of CRM and Sugar, we, we obviously offer all the consulting implementation, integration and training services across the, the full delivery of the project, like I mentioned earlier. Um, really, there, there, there's been 
over the years that we've worked within the space, we've implemented pretty much every business process we can think of, but there are still new and interesting ones that come along that we haven't touched on. But we offer the full suite of services from start to finish, and we tailor our approach to the organization we work with. So if there's a, a set number of internal skills, or there's an advanced process already in place, and we're simply just aligning the tool to that process, or we can work with you to define that process to start from scratch and build out best practices um, with your organization. So I'll just hand over to Aaron to talk a little bit about Sugar. Great, thanks Gary. So just a little bit about Sugar's program. Um, so Sugar was established in 2004 um, with a headquarter in um, Cupertino, California. So there are offices um, all across the US and um, globally. So our EMEA headquarters is in um, Munich, Germany. And then we also have um, quite a few people located in um, the Reading office um, in the UK. So um, a lot has uh, grown over the last uh, 16 years that Sugar has been um, around, uh, historically coming from an open source background um, that leaves Sugar with a very um, flexible and open tool from obviously its history of, of starting as an open source platform. So it's definitely, um, Sugar's evolved a lot over the last um, 18 months, especially with um, a big investment into the product offering more of a full customer experience platform with a suite of products, including Sugar Market, Sugar Sell, and Sugar Serve. So some people on the line might be using um, Sugar Serve or, or all three. Um, it's made it um, it's made Sugar definitely more agile within the market, having um, different offerings um, throughout the um, suite of products that we have. So it's been a lot of growth and we have a lot of history within the CRM space and, and more focusing now on uh, obviously a customer experience platform. So as I mentioned, there's been a lot of innovation. So Sugar was acquired by um, an investment firm called Excel KKR um, just about uh, two years ago, I'd say. Um, so we continue to grow our technology and um, our offerings, um, which we've had around, I think it was five acquisitions in the last 18 months. So there's been tremendous growth in terms of the technology that we've added to the Sugar Suite and Sugar Offering. Um, so it's made us be able to um, reach a lot more different uh, customers from all shapes and sizes that um, Sugar is a platform that's being used um, from smaller businesses with maybe 10 licenses up to thousands of licenses with some of our larger customers globally. So it's definitely one that can be um, that can grow within your business um, as you see growth over time. So um, just a bit of a highlight over Sugar CRM and I'll go just into the next slide, Gary, um, talk a little bit more around um, Sugar and um, a bit more on how we've kind of changed and um, our position now within the marketplace. So. Um, Sugar CRM kind of has four differentiating pillars um, that we're very proud of. So the first one being the time aware customer experience platform. So with that, um, we're really making a focus on um, being time aware. So knowing the history of your customers, you know, what they've done in the last six months or maybe the last few years, what they're currently um, doing now within the business and being able to predict um, what could happen in the future with this customer and what their likeliness to buy or um, the overall health of that business. And one platform that I know Gary's going to touch on later in this webinar is um, Sugar Discover. So that's something that is going to help um, our customers be obviously more time aware as they're working with customers within their business. The next pillar is the no touch information management. So this one's um, definitely very relevant to the topic that we have about automating processes, um, your sales processes and saving you time. So we um, strive uh, to have this no touch um, philosophy. So obviously no touch is ambitious, but um, as little clicks as possible and automating as many processes as we can. And we have a lot of tools that help us with that. Um, some being um, Sugar BPM, which we'll get into which is gonna automate your processes within CRM. Um, there's um, also the ability to work within your email using Sugar Connect um, plugin. So being able to add information directly into the CRM um, as you're within your Outlook or your Gmail. So making that really quick and easy to be connected to um, Sugar. Um, and then we also have the continuous cloud innovation. So this is um, touching on our partnership with um, AWS. Um, so we're able to 
not only um, we host with AWS, that's where the Sugar Platform is hosted, um, but we're also able to leverage the different technology that Amazon comes out with. So having that um, close relationship with them, we're able to bring to market faster technology because we're leveraging um, the, the speed of technology that Amazon is coming out with things. So that's really made it very agile for us to bring more um, new and exciting innovation to our product offering. And then our last pillar is lifelong commitment to customers. So um, customers being the forefront um, of our business, we obviously want all of our customers to be successful using sugar. So that's something that we really strive for and that we're really proud of. So as you'll see kind of in the middle where this all ties together, as I mentioned from the start, we have more of a customer experience platform offering where we have sugar market, sugar sell, and sugar serve for our customers to choose from. Um, if one uh, product suits them more than others, or if you're looking for the full suite, um, it's more now um, Sugar is able to offer kind of all of those things in one platform, um, where historically um, we were a bit, uh, we, we didn't have all the offerings that we do now. So it's been a very exciting 18 to 18 months um, where we're able to offer that full suite. So if we want to just jump into the next slide, Gary, and over to you. Okay, thanks, Erin. So I guess this is kind of what we're here to talk about, really. Um, so the, the, the game of sales is changing and especially the last um, eight to nine months has definitely changed an awful lot of, of what's happening out there in the marketplace and, and how we react to that. And especially buyers' expectations. So what we're seeing, and this trend has been running for a number of years, but it's really kind of coming home or, or really focusing at the moment with, with what's happening in the world. But buyers want a personalized experience the buyer has changed how they approach the process has changed it has been evolving and um, you know I, I think we've talked about this a lot but really we're seeing it more now than ever and um, people like the experience they get from the likes of amazon and from apple and google when they purchase something it's a highly automated process it's very hassle-free it's very easy and they expect that now from the b2b engagement they expect companies to offer similar standards and, and, and similar high expectations exist as a result of that. The challenge that we have is that the decision process is longer, um, especially since 2018 when, when the statistics, unfortunately some of the statistics take a while to, to collate, but the process was getting longer. It was more, more involved. There was a lot more um, internal processes within the customer themselves. And then also fr from our side, we were creating um, you know, the small delays or, or, or processing. And it's it's just the experience itself has dragged on. I can see, and I think Aaron, you can probably agree over the last few months, we've just seen that process elongate even further where with remote working, it's a bit more difficult to get the decision makers into a room to have that conversation. It might be, you know, technology and especially bud budgets are a lot more sensitive. So when people are looking at what they're looking to purchase or the product or the service, they're really evaluating and taking their time now more than they have in the past. And, you know, the, the big challenge is that, that salespeople are, are feeding back that finding new leads or, or, or getting um, new prospects into their funnel, into their pipeline is harder than it's ever been before. The, the marketing teams are shifting between doing an online fully digital campaign, using social media, shifting back into the traditional outbound cold calling, and it's mixed results. Each approach is having, um, you know, unusual, um, unusual results based on the service or the product or the vertical or the industry that we're targeting or, or the offering or the pitch that we're making. And it's led to a big increase in, in the BDR technologies that are out there and, and leveraging that really early phase um, sales tools that, that are kind of almost a step within the marketing automation space or just as you're entering into the lead qualification at the very early start of, of when the CRM process kicks in. Um, what we have seen, which is really interesting, is in, since, since the lockdown started across Europe, we've seen a big jump in the marketing automation space. People have moved their marketing spend and their outbound strategies very much more to an automated digital strategy where they're leveraging and the different channels that are available. They're monitoring their messaging across multiple channels. 
in an effort to make sure that with everybody working from home, people are a lot more time online and they're looking at and engaging in, in multiple channels, which might be a shift for some industries and have been like, you know, just the rigor for, for the last number of years for others. But there is a big expectation shift um, that's happening around us at the moment that has been like we, we had a comment one of our um, consultants actually we were having a conversation internally about three months ago and the general conversation was that businesses that we're talking to have moved forward about three years in their digital strategy in the space of three months so what we were expecting and forecasting to happen over a number of years happened in a very short period of time as a result of COVID and the lockdowns um, globally. So it's um, we've seen a dramatic shift um, from, from the technology adoption from our perspective when we look out to the marketplace. And I'm sure um, many of you might have seen something similar or, 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 or at least reacting to a shift in that general direction. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry, Eric. <laughs> so... Um, did you, I can, I can ultimately, to, sorry, yeah, yeah, go for productivity. it. If you want to just jump to the next point um, or the next slide, Gary. Uh, so kind of jumping into boosting um, productivity. Um, if you want to hit the next slide, there we go. Um, can your sales solution do this? So obviously talking about being more productive, um, automating processes. Um, we of course want to boost productivity and we want um, our team to save time because nobody wants to be spending, you know, 15, 20 minutes entering things manually into the CRM system. So with Sugar, you'll see it's really easy to automate those processes. It's, it's easy to automate workflows that so you're prompted to um, take action and um, you're able to really save time because you're not looking for something. It's already right at your fingertips. So um, can your sales solution do this? You know, help sales reps get ready for a prospect call in minutes, not hours. Of course, it takes quite a bit of time. If you're looking into a company um, and or into a business or you're looking into the person that you're about to speak with when you um, hop on a call, a sales call to do an initial qualification. So you wanna be prepared with all the information um, about this um, customer or lead um, before you get on the phone with them so that you're obviously sounding more knowledgeable and that you understand their business and that you're more prepared. Um, allowing for effective collaboration across the organization. So within Sugar, you'll see there's an activity stream where you're able to collaborate with um, other parts of the business where you're adding in different tasks, different comments, um, but you're also able to have um, the ability to add tasks for others for other teams that they need to look at something and that's all going to be connected through the dashboard or the home page that they see when they log on. So um, another thing that's obviously going to save you time is if you have a whole 360 degree view of a customer or a prospect that you're working with. So that's knowing what's happened in the past, what's happening now, and um, having upcoming activities and engagements planned in to, to keep on top. So that's always going to save you time when you have all of this information in one place. And of course, you know, the topic of the web webinar, automating those sales processes. So saving time for your sales reps so that they can actually spend time selling rather than and entering in data into the system and looking for that information um, for you know a sales call or a customer call that they're going to have. Okay, so jumping into um, a product that we that we offer as a plugin into Sugar, which is called Hint. So some of you might already be using this or have heard of it before. This is a plugin that's going to pull in. Um, we have about eighty different. Uh, uh, we have 80 different uh, data sources that we work with um, and it's publicly available information. So it's GD GDPR compliant where it's going to look out into the internet um, with these sources that we have relationships with and bring it into um, right directly into sugar on a side panel. So you're able to really enhance the information on that person or that business so that you're uh, more up to date. And it's going to obviously, as you know, the theme save you time. So um, there's been a study that this saves, um, it's, I think it's around uh, 18 minutes of time um, from Googling different things about this business. So if I'm looking here, this is Rich Green, our chief product officer. So it's going to give me all that information around sugar. It's going to give the, me information about Rich. And if, um, if I were able to scroll down on this, it would show me any news articles about sugar. So I would be able to know um, 
the um, things happening within the business and it's going to be able to prompt me for any conversations that I'm having with them. So just right there, that's going to save any seller, any, um, you know, customer success rep uh, time because they're going to be able to use Hint um, right directly within Sugar. So it's delivering key information right within Sugar. You can click uh, with one click, import that into the record. Um, it's going to give you insight, of course, on that contact and then the news related items are there going to, are going to be there then at the bottom. So if you want to go to the next slide, Gary. Yeah, so that's uh, obviously improving data entry is one of the key time savers that we that we look to. So um, Hint is actually one of the core tools that we use, but data aggregation and automated data input is obviously one of your, your key efficiency gains that you can make. Um, so within the tool, you need to promote best practices. So obviously having a tool, if you're using Excel or using something else, definitely shifting into a CRM, especially Sugar CRM, will allow you to drive um, huge efficiencies and, and allow you to automate your processes. If you haven't mapped your business process, now is a really good time to do it. If you have already, then you know, there's no harm in, in just reviewing it and making sure that it is, it is consistent across the organization. Um, if you are doing that process, service design is something really worth looking at. It, it really helps um, you know, create a, a framework and, and allow you to really analyze the end to end impact of the decisions that you're making within the process. What's more important though is actually consider how the buyer um, sees the engagement and how they engage with you. Um, they might want to engage via a chatbot or through a live chat or simply by investigating information and then coming to you through a social channel. So having having looked at that and researched how is the buyer coming in allows you to have those channels available immediately to facilitate that. And again, live chat and chatbots and that kind of stuff is all supported by, um, by Sugar uh, as a channel that we're able to produce. When the person is actually at that stage, we just call it lead nurturing. It's a fantastic element of marketing automation, such as Sugar Market. It allows us to create nurture campaigns to, to provide information in context um, and then monitor the engagement that we have with that content so that we can change to further content. At the moment, people don't go and buy a product just based on the brochure that we send them. They research, they spend a good bit of time um, wanting to have knowledge, wanting to have insights and information that will help them achieve the goals that they have. So providing content and getting drip nurture and campaigns going and, and, and providing information in a timely manner is really crucial in today's market. Once they come in, we have to then obviously make that decision of what is the marketing qualified, and we need to score using lead scoring that again is built into Sugar Markets. Once they come in, we need to then streamline how we communicate. So having email templates available to the salesperson, maybe automating that first communication so that it doesn't feel totally automated but you know we, we automatically assign it to the relevant salesperson we then send a personalized email automatically to the prospect engaging the conversation even something as simple as using sugar connect to say do you want to pick a time slot in my calendar that would suit you you know these are all steps that would have been manually done that you can simply automate like that over and back of i don't know does tuesday after three suit you or you know this kind of delay that you get and time that's spent doing that you can simply send a link to say you pick the time in my calendar that suits you instantly have a meeting scheduled with a prospect without any drama going on and um, so i'll just move i'll just keep moving forward so uh, when we look at that then we want to automatically so we have a tool built in um to sugar called sugar bpm sugar bpm allows us to automate our business processes within the CRM. So once we've figured out what the process is, we look at the elements that can be automated. There is a risk and you have to be careful of not over automating because people instantly, like it, 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 it's just intuitive that it, this is a machine that's doing this and not a person. And we want to find that balance between it being personal and from a person and, and from it just being an automated process and you're just part of the machine. Um, but being able to schedule callbacks, being able to archive your emails, create your notes really intuitively and easily um, within the CRM, having your business process mapped allows you to then take those automated steps, drive your comms, make sure that the salesperson knows what they're doing next and, and what's going to happen. Um, you need to have context in the process to make sure that each communication, like what Aaron touched on previously, by having that 360 degree view, knowing all of the communications that have gone out, knowing the comments from the last call you had, 
knowing some insight and information about the customer you're you're going to be talking to all helps drive that context and especially then drives the product match that you might have aligned with that particular customer. Um, within Sugar, we you know the Sugar BPM is very straightforward. It's all just drag and drop. It makes it really easy to do that. But um, within there, we can actually then create not only our customized um, emails and, and templates that we're going to use and the system can generate out, um, we can drive notifications to the user. We could have something simple as this particular prospect is on the website right now looking at something. Now would be a really good time to pick up the phone and engage or even just send some interesting content and see if the person reviews it. And we're able to monitor the emails that we send out to see if it's been viewed, if it's been forwarded to somebody else, how many times someone has engaged with a particular piece of content. All of that stuff just becomes so much more powerful when, when you're you know, stuck at home, having to do everything through a laptop and a Zoom, uh, a Zoom channel. Um, what we can also do then is, is generate, you know, anything that, that takes time. So proposals take a considerable amount of time to pull together, having them automatically generated and then hand it over for the, the human to do the last bit of personalization. You know, it's all about trying to drive as much efficiency into the process as we can while consistently being able to monitor what's happening where we are in the process and how that's flowing for both the salesperson and the buyer. And um, how we do that is, is we, we visually map out the process and then we create um, contingencies within that. So we have a tool that we call the customer journey plugin. And what that allows us to do is to create multiple buyer journeys. So um, what I touched on previously about having a sales process, but having it from the buyer's perspective, you might have different products or services that actually start or even just buyer personas that come to you through different channels or at different stages of knowledge um, or maturity. So being able to recognize those and then create the particular sales process and the sales journey or the buyer journey um, for each of those is really important. Being able to have that mapped into the application so that regardless of the process, it guides the user through what are the next best steps that you should take based on what's happened to date. Um, and we can touch on something that's really powerful, which is um, um, Sugar have an AI now that actually um, monitors what's happening and can actually then predict the outcomes so that we can take steps now to drive the best possible outcome. But we can touch on that in a little while. So what we can do is we can apply these different journeys with different steps. It could be schedule a call, do something, create a task. And this is actually generating content within the application. It's assigning tasks to people. It's prompting the user to, to engage and do something. It could just be send this content um, at a particular point in time to make sure that we're staying fresh and we're staying in touch. Or it could be that you have a know your customer process that's quite evolved where you need to actually get certain pieces of information either for a legislative process or just because that is your internal process to allow the best possible engagement. And you need to know who particular individuals are and what their role is and how you engage. So having that within a visual tool that shows the salesperson what to do based on the type of product, service, or buyer that you're dealing with is really, really powerful. And it also then drives huge efficiency within the process because we're just able to take those steps everybody's taking roughly the same approach. Like one of the biggest issues across a large organization is having a standardized approach, having everybody working um, in the same direction so that we can then mo monitor and measure and then start the feedback loop of what works best. Let's get that back into the CRM so that we're evolving the process that has been documented so that everybody is driving towards the best possible outcome which for everybody really is a, is a, a satisfied, happy customer and um, revenue for the organization, um, which is what we're all, we're all driving towards. And um, Garrett, the thing I really like about the customer journey plugin is um, when I'm using it, when I complete, a when I complete one of the steps, then create um, a task for me. Um, let's say if I've completed a certain task uh, or a, a step within the process that I'm working with a new opportunity, then it it'll automatically put a task in my calendar to follow up with that um, with that lead in one week's time if, if I haven't heard from them or something. So it's already putting things into my calendar um, for follow-ups, which really um, keeps me on top of communication with um, any customers or opportunities that I'm working with. 
Yeah, that, that's it's, it's just so powerful to be able to have, you know, you don't have to spend your life trying to think about what to do next or, or when did I last speak to somebody if the system is helping you drive drive that forward. It's, it's, it's really exactly. powerful within the process. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what... and it's just one last thing. Just Sorry, just before you jump in, um, just one last thing to consider if you are looking um, at this is don't overcook the application that you're working with. Don't have the salesperson spending 50 or 60% of their day in putting data into the system. You need to find that balance. There's no point in making them really efficient and then having that time saving that you've created as a data entry task. You know, so you have to find that balance between getting enough information so the process will run and you can get your KPIs, but not having the salesperson spending all day long entering data, which is why the, the data aggregation tool like Sugar Hints is just so so powerful. It just minimizes that time spent having Sugar Connect, getting emails and calendar appointments synced. Um, it's it's just really powerful to be able to to keep the salesperson engaged in, in working opportunities rather than data entry. Yeah. Sorry, Aaron. Go ahead. No, no problem. Well, why don't we touch just real quick on um, the mobile and then maybe we can jump into a little bit more about um, Discover and Node before we take some questions because I know we're coming down to the bottom. Sure. So um, one thing, if you want to go to the next one, perfect. Um, one thing that obviously um, we're not using as much now, but I hope that we use this more in the future once, um, you know, COVID times kind of slows down is that when we're out um, on the, the road, this is something that absolutely saves me tons of time when I'm meeting with customers or prospects. I'm able to use the uh, mobile edition of Sugar, which comes with all of our licenses. So I'm able to quickly you know, get on my phone, um, check the details of the customer that I'm working with. Um, it's really easy to work from my mobile when I'm obviously not sitting at my desk and it saves me tons of time um, when I'm on the road. And also um, one of the functionalities that I like like um, a lot is, you know, when I'm on the tube and I don't have service, I'm able to still find what I'm looking for with the offline access. So this is something that's really powerful. And a lot of um, salespeople especially really love this, um, this feature from, um, from Sugar. So the mobile edition is obviously going to save you tons and tons of time um, once we're all able to, you know, leave our houses and go back on the road. So if you want to go, maybe skip ahead two slides or three slides, Gary, and we'll just hop into if you want to talk a bit more about um, Node and Sugar Discover. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so just this is a preamble, ahead. obviously. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, so I was just going to say that obviously having all of this data within the CRM is great, but getting those KPIs and getting those measurements out, you need reporting. You need to have that built into the application so you can measure and you can you can then start that feedback loop. So obviously Sugar itself has full reporting. You can have dashboards that allow you to, to surface that information in real time. There's no point waiting six months to see did the change in your process give you the desired outcome. You should be looking at that in real time. And um, so that's just a standard reporting. The tool should have that and you should be able to measure trying to do that with Excel or something like that. It's, it's just almost impossible. You can't really stay on top of it. Um, what Sugar have also included in the platform um, in the last 12 months is Sugar Discover, which is a, a data analytics tool. So what CRM applications and sales tools have at the moment is a moment in time. Where are we today? What does it look like right now? Every time I run my reports, I get what is happening right now. Um, what is really powerful about Sugar Discover is that it records all of the changes in the data as it's happening and stores those with a timestamp in a just a humongous database so that you can actually start to look at things over a period of time. So you can say what happened six months ago and compare that to what's happening today or how did this opportunity evolve from a time perspective? How did we get from here to here why was there a six month delay in getting from the first status to the second status? Or what are all the different um, conditions that are happening around that? Not only that then, discover no matter what reports you build within the data analytics engine, it will then look at what you're trying to, to, to get out of it and it will then suggest insights that you may not have been looking for. So that's hugely powerful, especially as, as a sales director when I'm looking at at certain things in Sugar Discover, and I'm trying to trend where I think um, the, 
different changes that I've made to the process uh, are going and, and what's happening, the insight in Sugar Discover is then telling me things like the average length of time that it takes for an opportunity to close may have changed by 10% in the last 30 days. Or, you know, it, it just starts to float this extra information that I wasn't really thinking about when I built the report, but add a huge amount of context and information. So Sugar Discover is incredibly powerful because it has that aspect of time. And that time aware is one of the four pillars that Sugar are now building their platform on. And it's the only CRM player in the market that actually natively just has time built in as a factor. Um, if you then look at the recent acquisition, which happened just in August of this year, where Sugar purchased Node, which is an AI as a platform, um, they now have a full AI engine connected into the back end of Sugar, which then complements Discover. So not only can we now look backwards in time with Discover at any moment in time and, and start to trend, Node now analyzes that data and starts to predict into the future. So not only are we making changes to our sales process and we're looking at the data right now to find out where we are, Node is also then telling us where it thinks we're going to be in three months' time. And that's just insanely, um, insanely un just unbelievable tools to get your hands on uh, as a sales leader within any organization to be able to look at your forecast and say our sales team are forecasting that we're going to do this number, but the CRM is forecasting the likelihood of that being real is at 80%, and it has a different number. And I think it was an exercise that was run just recently where um, about eight or nine months' worth of sales data was put into Node, and it accurately predicted the outcome of every opportunity by about 85% correct, just based on the information it had over the nine months, it wasn't told whether the opportunities closed or not, and it was able to predict really accurately. So um, having that ability, and, and Node is built into the, the CRM tool, and it's also available within Discover. So by default, you will get you know insights on the likelihood of this opportunity closing um, within the time frame. So if you have an expected close date, it looks at how opportunities run in general within your system, and it will be able to tell you whether or not it thinks that will happen. Um, and it will predict things like the accuracy of forecasting. So based on how forecasting has happened in the past or how opportunities have gone, it will look at what it believes those numbers will be over the next six months. Um, and then when you start to change your process and you start that feedback loop, Node very quickly will start to give you a change in its forecast. So you're not having to waste any amount of time to see am I improving my strategy because the system will actually start to predict what those changes are doing. So it's incredibly powerful. Um, Sugar is the only system in the world at the moment that gives you that time based. It's a bit, it was a brilliant analogy that, that one of the guys said, said if, you, if you're on your phone and you're skipping through photographs, it's great because you go back in time, you have these great memories and you're thinking about where you were in France last year. And then suddenly you'll hit a video and that whole experience changes when the video plays. And just something as simple as that is the difference between having a CRM tool and having Sugar with that time aware that Sugar becomes that video where we can fast forward and rewind, we can replay what's happened, and then when you drop Node in, it just comes to life because it starts predicting what's going to happen next. So it's it's an incredible um, new tool that's available um, within within the platform okay sorry that's probably enough for me um, <laughs> no worries. So, we yeah. some questions gary yeah so we just see if there's um there's actually one um okay i don't think there's any let's just see now there might be one or two questions um can you see any there i'm just sorry now i'm just trying to get into it here no problem. Take your time. Um, what is your favorite part of sugar, which makes your job easier? I can I know, answer that. that <laughs> yeah, no, I can, I can speak to that. So um, obviously selling sugar and also um, using sugar in um, 
in, in my daily, you know, my daily job, um, I'm using it to manage all the leads and, and customers that I work with. So of course, for me, I'd be, I'd be lost without sugar and um, it really keeps me organized throughout my day and um, keeps me on top of things. So my favorite functionality I'd have to say is probably as of recently, um, the dashboard um, and more specifically um, the renewals console which we also have um, kind of a sales console. So what that does is um, it gives me a list of all the opportunities that I'm working on. And when I click it, it then will show me all of the details within that opportunity while I'm still in the dashboard. So I can see um, the opportunity I'm working at, working with, um, the contact, um, all the details of what I'm selling, um, any um, calls and meetings that I've made. And then if I want to dig deeper into that record, I can click right straight through into that record. So um, the renewals console is something that Sugar recently came out with um, earlier this year. And it's something that I really enjoy using, um, you know, every day when I log into Sugar, it's the first thing that I see. Okay, very good. Um, Sarah has posted a question here, when will we see Node in Sugar? Um, I believe that is the Q4 release, which is, um, is the Q4 or Q1, but it's, it's imminent. So, um, yeah, I, think, I think they're go. aiming for the end of next year, um, or the end of, sorry, at the end of this year, um, but it could be um, early start to um, 2021. Yeah, so, so there's, there's um, I know there's a bunch of innovation coming out in the release that's imminent and, and Node is, is they, uh, I believe from, they were hoping for it to be really quick, but it'll be probably Q1, which which could be early Q1 of next year. And um, it's when Node will, will, will have general availability. Um, so Daniela has, has, um, has asked, how can sales reps see where a lead is in the sales process and how will they know if a lead is ready to buy? Um, so I can start that one and Aaron, maybe you can pick it up. So uh, typically, um, there's a number of different ways we do it. Obviously the customer journey plugin is, is by far the best tool to use for that. So as we work through the process and as you change data within the opportunity, you add calls and meetings, we can move the visual representation of the process forward using the customer journey plugin. And you can manually interact with it as well to say that I've done that task and I've moved that forward. Um, and with that as well, we can actually call out to other systems. So one of the steps in the process could be check with accounts to see that the account has been set up or check, do a credit check with credit safe. Um, wow. And that will be done automatically and come back. Um, another way is simply by using um, a status and substatus drop down so that as we work our way through the opportunity we're, we're, we're able to say manually this is where we are um i don't know aaron do you have any other suggestions yeah, no, that, i know that um, a customer that I, I work with they have it linked with um customer journey so, so when they've gone through a specific um steps within the journey it will automatically through bpm change the um status of the of the opportunity from maybe um, original uh, discovery call to um, proposal and um, quote or something. So it'll be linked to the activities that they've done in the customer journey, and then it'll automatically change the status of the opportunity because then um, any sales managers that are looking at opportunities you're working on can see the opportunity moving through the sales cycle because it's directly linked to the activities you've done and the engagement you've had within customer journey with that specific um, opportunity. Great, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we'll just do one last question um, and then we can wrap up, I think. But uh, how can I better leverage my email within Sugar? Um, um, sure, I think you touched on this briefly, then. Gary, um, with Sugar Connect um, as the plugin. So um, something that's really nice is uh, the connection that you can use with um, Sugar Connect, which is going to connect your email, whether that's um, you know Outlook or um, or Gmail. It, you can work within Sugar while you're in your email. So there's going to be a side panel there on the right hand side, so you're able to see if someone emails you. Um, if they're an existing customer, if it's a new lead, if it is a new lead that you've never spoken with before, then you can then directly add them into Sugar from your email. So there's a lot of cool features. I know Gary talked about, you know, having someone book in a meeting with you through Sugar Connect. So being able to see your calendar and 
and book in a time slot. So there's a lot of really great functionality that'll make your, your day easier and save you lots of time. And obviously automate processes, you know, the, the theme of today's webinar that you can use within um, Sugar Connect. Great, okay. Um, I don't have anything, I, I think um, at 45 minutes, we probably have capitalized enough of everybody's time today. But I think if, um, if anyone has any questions or is looking for further information, we have a, a short video on service design if you're interested just to get a better understanding of how that works or if you want to see anything that we talked about today in action in, in any of the applications or even just to have a chat about ideas or, or if, if you want um, some insight in, in help with your own process, just feel free to reach out to either myself or Aaron um, if you email sales at Provident. Um, someone will definitely come back to you pretty quickly and I promise it won't be an automated email <laughs> following the webinar. We'll, um, we will personally jump in and, and, and pick it up and, and follow up with you. Um, but uh, for now, I'd just like to thank Aaron for joining today and, and giving us all that insight and um, thank all of you for, for attending on today's session. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Gary. And, and as Gary mentioned, um, feel free to email us if you have any questions. So thank you so much for your time and, and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, okay. Thanks very much.